by Camp Believable. Another Universal Yums unboxing, and this time we're traveling to the UK. Plus, we'll be doing another giveaway. Yes, we're actually going to do another giveaway in this video. So every time that someone clicks on our link down below, and if you purchase a box through us, we get $5 off our next box. But instead of taking that money towards our next box, we're going to use that to buy another box for someone else. So right now, for example, two people in the last video bought a box through our link. So we have $10, and we're going to use that $10 towards a box to give to someone else. Yes. So basically, every time you guys buy a box from us, we give one away. So if you want to participate in the giveaway, you have to comment down below, I want to try Universal Yums. Also, in order to win the giveaway, you do have to be subscribed to our channel. So make sure you press the little subscribe button. Mm -hmm. While you're at it, go ahead and click the little notification button. Yep. I'll leave all the details in the description, but We'll be picking someone on this date that I'll put right here, and we'll be announcing it on Instagram. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, it's at the Flept, and we'll announce it there. And then we'll also leave a comment on this video to let the person know. If you don't have an Instagram, leave your email and we'll email you. Because if not, we won't know how to contact you. All right, so UK snacks. This should be fun because we have tried UK snacks at Epcot. Yeah. We did a video once where we went around Epcot trying all the different snacks from the different pavilions and then at the UK we, we got the crisps. According to this, the first thing we're going to try is honey and mustard crisps. Okay. Oh, which, Scotland. From Scotland, yes. Mackey's honey and mustard potato crisps, not chips. They call it crisps. Right. So many world-changing innovations have come from the UK. Harry Potter, Hey Jude, Newton's Law of Gravity, but to us, one novel revelation tops them all, crisps. Or as we call them on the other side of the pond, potato chips. <laughs> An 1817 cookbook by Englishman Williams Kitchener's The Cook's Oracle contained the first known potato chip recipe in the world. As you might expect, the book was a bestseller. Soon, potato chips changed the world's cuisine, well, forever. Which brings us to this honey mustard crisps. Each one is coated with the notoriously strong spiciness of English mustard and a touch of sweet honey for the perfect way to celebrate the origins of the potato chip and to kick off our rollicking UK adventure. Now, I remember when we tried the UK crisps from Epcot, right. their chips crisps are so much crispier sure. than our chips here. Right. So I don't know if it's just if that's how all their chips are, and I can tell like this. Wow. Yeah, I can tell. These are going to be crispy. It's thick, too. They're like really thick potato cut compared to like, for example, like uh, Lay's. They're like super thin and right. airy. Yeah. These are more like, they look like an actual potato slice. Looks real. Yeah. I'm excited. Cheers. Whoa. Uh-oh. What? <laughs> That's a spicy mustard. No, it's good. You like it? Yeah. I'm surprised. I don't even like mustard, but there's the something sweet about it, Whoa. the honey part. I'm not getting the sweet. No? I mean, it, it is mustard. Well, this is like, I'm not kidding when they said spicy mustard. No, you're right. It is spicy mustard. Like, it's it's there. Wow. There's a small hint of honey. You don't taste it? Like a sweetness? I taste a little bit, but that mustard is strong. It's starting to kick in the more I chew on it. You like it though? <laughs> I, I, but I know you don't like mustard. I don't like mustard. I just love the chip. The chip, the, oh, yeah. the crisp the itself crisp. is so, it's like the perfect chip for me. And like, it's covered in salt too. So I love the way it's salty. These this other this ones? one doesn't taste a lot like mustard. I don't know if I'm getting used to it. Yeah, you know I'm getting used to it? <laughs> that first chip was spicy. I think it's fun. It's good. Next up, we've got something sweet. And this is actually something I've been looking forward to. This is a, it's called Grandma's Wild Toffee Flapjacks. This is a oat bar with toffee. It says, one thing people in the US and the UK have in common, their love of flapjacks. Well, sort of. You probably think of flapjacks as another word for pancakes, but in the UK, there's something completely different. Their flapjacks are made with oats, butter, brown sugar, and syrup, spread into a tray, baked, cut into bars, and sometimes, if you're lucky, slather with soft toffee. Sounds like we all have a new kind of flapjack to start loving. Huh. So it's like pancake, but it's not. I didn't know that. that I, don't think I didn't is... know that that's what flapjacks were. I thought flapjacks were just normal pancakes. I think here in the U.S. they are. It smells nice. It smells, good. It smells like brown sugar. Cheers. Mm -hmm. It's nice. 
Not too sweet. I'm always surprised when like the snacks are not too sweet. Yeah. Because we're so used to like all the, all our snacks here in America are like so sweet, like all the desserty stuff. Right. This is nice. It has a good texture with the oats, a little bite to it. Like it doesn't even taste like unhealthy, <laughs> if that makes sense. It doesn't taste like sugared up oats. Like it tastes kind of like hearty. And the toffee is not, the toffee on top is a thin, thin layer, so right. it's not overwhelming. Okay. This is really good. I approve. I like this more than the chips. Grandma's the wild jacks. toffee flapjacks are good. <laughs> One thing that Universal Yums has done more recently is that if you like a snack specifically, they do have them in like a shop on their website. So if you don't want to buy a box, but you see a snack that we try that you like the way it sounds or you want to try it yourself, then you can pick specific snacks. The only diff the only thing though is that you can't just buy like one snack. You have to buy like a, a, a box of 10 or, you know, you would have to buy a pack. Right. So now we have to deal with something we don't like too much, which is candy. No. We're going to get that out of the way already. Okay. We have two different candies in our yum bag. Lemon, sherbet, fizzy hard candy okay. that we're gonna do first. And then we have another fizzy candy apparently, but it's a chew. Bristow's sherbet lemons, fizzy lemon hard candy is. Yeah, you already know what sherbet is, an especially colorful fruity ice cream like dessert. But as this section teases, there is a different meaning in the UK. Their sherbet is the name of fizzy powder found inside of many tangy candies, such as these zingy lemons. One more thing, in the UK you might hear a lot of locals ask, if his mate wants to hit the pub for a sherbet. That's because sherbet is also slang for beer, which coincidentally brings us to our next few yums. Huh. huh. So the okay. next two yums coming up, it says that we're gonna pop into the pub. So it's supposed to be like- uh, Pub snacks. Pub snacks, yeah. So I never knew that they call sherbet. sherbet beer. Yeah. I mean, it's just gonna taste like lemon probably. I just wonder if it's actually fizzy. Tastes like a normal lemon candy. <laughs> yeah. When does the fizziness happen? I mean, it's candy, so I don't like it, but <laughs> it tastes like lemon. I mean, it doesn't taste bad or anything. It's oh. fine. Okay, so the next one is another fizzy candy, but this one's a chew, and it's a orange and champagne chew, which sounds good, but it's a good. chew. And we hate like these chewy candies yeah. that get stuck in your teeth. Oh no, this is, yeah. <laughs> There's nowhere better to grab a drink than in London. Why? Well, it's home to 1,327 bars. The most of any city in the world. Mm. Wow, what? I didn't know that. It's also where the Bucks Fizz, a beloved cocktail made from two parts champagne and one part orange juice, was invented. It was invented in 1921, four years before the mimosas in Paris. So mimosas oh. come from Paris. When it comes to this chewy Bucks fizzy inspired candy, don't worry if you're not over 21. Not because the UK's drinking age is 18, but because this chew contains zero bubbly, only 100% citrus deliciousness. Too bad. I would have liked it way more if it actually had a little some alcohol little in it, spike. some champagne. Oh. Cheers. Hmm. Huh. Is it fizzy? I don't think it's fizzy. No, is this supposed to be a champagne and orange flavor, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm like tricking myself, but I think I taste a little champagne. I but think so too, but obviously I don't know. the orange is coming through the most. And if you not, told me I wouldn't have thought of champagne, but now I'm like kinda. It's not like, that sticky either. I thought it was gonna really stick to my teeth. Kinda falls apart. Not bad. Better than the, the lemon one, I think. Not bad. Yeah, it didn't stick to my teeth too much. It wasn't like really, really sticky. Right. It kinda dissolved. So this is the one that I was excited about. This is Funyuns, but the UK version. They're called Johnny's Pickled Onion Rings. So you're standing at the bar enjoying your Bucks Fizz and the bartender sets down a snack. What do you think it is? Peanuts? Nope. Fries? Nope. Onion rings? Close, but no, it's a jar of pickled onions. Oh. <laughs> Munching on these miniature malt vinegar marinated onions straight out of the jar is a timeless tradition in the UK pubs. Dig into these addicted pickled onion inspired crisps to experience the intensely tangy tradition for yourself. Okay. So this might be different than Funyuns because Funyuns are not pickled. Right. So I'm, ass I'm assuming this one tastes see, a little vinegary. stronger, like vinegar, yeah. So they just eat like pickled onions like that out of a jar. Yeah. As a snack. <laughs> You can smell the vinegar. Oh, I smell vinegar, yeah. Cheers. 
Whoa. Whoa. That is salty. Huh. That is like a pop of vinegar and salt. That is intense. I gotta try another one of those. Oh, I did not expect that. It's kind of uncomfortable. It's like good, but it's like... It's a, it's a lot. It's like really uh -huh. vinegar. Wow. Huh. Super um, salty too. It's just too salty. I think that's really the main oh, thing. I think it's too salty. Yeah, it's just... Whoa. Woo. That's intense. <laughs> I didn't expect that. All right, I'm sorry, but I will say <clears> onions <throat> are better than this. Yeah, they need to calm down on the, Is on this the salt. Wait. Well, I do appreciate, you know, what they're advertising. That's exactly what it tastes like, you know. Yeah, it does taste. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> right. but this tastes like a pickled onion. Right. A little bit extra. I mean, I have pickled onions here, and I, I'm you pretty sure they're, they're not that salty. Your pickled onions would taste like that. <laughs> I'm gonna do it UK style. All right. So here's an actual pickled onion, homemade. Homemade. That tastes weird and not even salty. I use red wine vinegar, they use malt vinegar. That's my new way to eat a snack now. I'm gonna eat pickled onions <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so next up we've got cookies. Dean's Shortbread Rounds Shortbread Cookies. Which sounds safe. Like I don't think there could be anything wrong with these. I mean, they also sound kind of boring, but we'll see. This yum story takes us to Huntley, Scotland. It begins as many Scottish tales begin, with bagpipes, <laughs> Back in 1970, <laughs> I didn't expect it. <laughs> Bagpipes. <laughs> okay. Back in 1975, villain Helen Dean wanted to raise money for the Huntley Pipe Band, and they could think of no better way than by selling Helen's super crumbly, extra buttery shortbread. Fast forward to today, and the Deans of Huntley are a household name all across Scotland, but for baked goods, not bagpipes. I just got so thrown off because it's like, where many tales begin, <laughs> bagpipes, but cheers. Yeah. It tastes just like the little blue can Danish cookies, shortbread cookies today. A little today. more crumbly than those. Those have a little more bite to it, but still good. Yeah. I'm going to save this for coffee. So we got two snacks left. We have toffee and then one more bag of crisps. So this is the one that I'm probably kind of worried about the most. Yummy. Yummy banana toffee. It is a banana toffee bar. Now. This also might be a sticky. Ooh. This is, this the, not gonna, this is the bad one. Uh-huh. You might associate bagpipes with Scotland, but do you associate bananas with England? You're about to. Centuries ago, a Jamaican banana known as Big Mike used to be eaten worldwide, but an 1890 banana disease destroyed all of them. Aww. Luckily, in Derbyshire, England, a local duke named William Cavendish cultivated a new disease-resistant banana, which we still eat to this day. If that's not enough to get the Banana Britain Association to stick, then this decadent, chewy toffee ought to do the trick. I mean, I can't even rip it off. <laughs> like, I don't, even, I don't even want to try this. <laughs> wow. I mean, let's just try to take a bite of it. Cheers. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> doesn't taste... I mean, I didn't even, I barely taste it. I just know this is going to be stuck in my mouth for the rest of the day if I commit to this. It tastes like banana caramel. To me, the flavor doesn't bother me. It's just the whole... I don't know. It's... Mm. We're just... Obviously, we're just... We, we don't, don't like candy. We don't like candy, but we also don't especially like... That's the worst. That kind of candy. Yeah. <laughs> that's the worst candy of all. Because now I gotta suck my teeth, you know? This last snack should be the most interesting. Yeah. I think this is the one I've been looking forward to the most. And this is Welsh's Potato Crisp Lamb and Mint Potato Chips Crisps. Now, <laughs> everything so far has tasted like, you know, what the it label says. says. Yeah. So let's so see. So lamb and mint. Could be your hit or miss. Because lamb is not traditionally a flavor I've wanted a potato chip, but... I don't even know what... How that would even taste, but... I don't know, sounds kind of fun at the same time. Looking for lamb? You can't go wrong in Wales. The 11 million sheep outnumber humans 3 to 1, and account for 80% of Welsh agriculture. But within Wales, there's no better place for lamb than the quaint town of Brickon, located just below a mountain range where the thousands of sheep are raised. The town is known for super soft wool products and delicious lamb dishes, including the mid-season roast lamb that inspired these crisps. 
The best part? No actual lambs went into making them. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> it says lamb and mint seasoning. <laughs> How do you make lamb? I can't seasoning? even think of like, when I think of lamb, like, I don't have a flavor that pops up. Hmm, it does kind of smell like. Okay. Meat. Kind of weird. Interesting. Wow, it smells, it does smell like. The, it smells like this lamb dish I make, the turmeric lamb thing I make. Is Isn't there turmeric in here? No, there's paprika, onion powder. Cheers. Whoa. <laughs> hmm. It kind of does taste like lamb. That's so It tastes like that dish I the, It's not very salty. I want more salt. No. That lamb shoulder thing I make. It does taste like lamb. I don't know if I love that. It's not salty though. It needs to be saltier. What was the thing? Oh, the. Well, I'm not something that salty. <laughs> Pile one on top of the other. Get a pickled onion. But I will say, again, in yeah, UK's real chips crisps are legit. Crisps. Hey, you can't say chips, they're crisps. Right. Their crisps are, are legit. Let's see, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. Right? The combo? Yeah, it does work. If you want salt, <clears throat> get the saltiest thing you know. <laughs> and add it to a crisp and... I'm gonna now, try. Now. Okay, now we gotta vote for our our favorites. Yeah. So the Yum scoreboard. Favorite Yum? Um, Toffee. I think so. This flapjack toffee yes. thing. Not toffee of the banana and not oh, toffee right. of the candy, the but the flapjack. Yes. That. I think was the most surprising out of all of them. It was just so nice. If we could pick a second favorite, I'm gonna go with the, surprisingly, I think I'm gonna go with the chips. mustard chips. Cause for being yeah. mustard, they surprised me. They were good. Okay, worst, yum. Worst, oh yeah, the banana. that's easy. Yeah. yeah, the banana toffee for sure. We couldn't even eat it. Weirdest yum? Oh, the lamb. The lamb and mint, yeah. That was an easy one to know, cause yeah. this is definitely, I still can't believe when I, I smell I think, it. I don't know if it's cumin or... So it's kind of weird, because I don't know what creates the lamb flavor, but I think it's, it's cumin. It's there. That's what I'm... That's my pick. Next month's clue, okay. We're off to a land where no one ever frowns, where rather than say hello, locals bow down. But here are two customs you'll find even more nice, savoring salty limes and nooshing sticky mango rice. <laughs> well, I think that's Japan. Yeah. Oh, sticky, we haven't had sticky Japan. mango rice. I know we've been wanting a Japan yeah. box, but I'm looking at the comments to see what people are saying. A lot of people are saying Thailand. I guess it's Thailand. It's probably Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing we're gonna do is a few trivia oh, okay. questions. Let's see how well you do this time. Let's test your knowledge of the United Kingdom. Which of the following is the name of a real UK town? Dull, Scotland. <laughs> this next one, I can't even try to say it. Oh yeah. Look. Lanfair, Pulagi, Wigalagliri, Chalandra, Wallace, Hogahu, Wales, Boggy Bottom, England, Moneymore, Northern Ireland. Well, I want to go with the really, really long one. I know, why would they can't be they couldn't have just made that up. <laughs> that's actually probably what it is. Oh, it's all of the above. Oh, that's cheating. <laughs> Clearly the UK knows how to get creative with its town names. If you can't believe it. Lawn Fair, Plog, Logger, Log, Log, whatever that one is, is actually the second longest one word town name second. in the world. I think the first is in Greenland. They have it here, it's from New Zealand. New Zealand. Uh, Look at this one. Tamata, Waka, Tele. <laughs> Just a bunch of letters. Wow. New Zealand. Look how long it goes on. That is. Why would they do that? They don't have, They can't say it out loud. They have to probably just be like. They just say the first word or something. The first, like. Yeah. Which of the following is the national animal of Scotland? Sheetland pony, dragon, gray seal, unicorn. The pony. Surprisingly, it's the unicorn. Oh. Scotsmen love their legend so much. Their national animal is a unicorn. The creature was a symbol of power in Celtic myth and was adopted into the Scottish coat of arms in the 12th century. Makes you wish your national animal was a bit more magical, huh? P.S. Dragon was close. It's the national animal of Wales. Ah. Oh. Which of the following is a real event in Wales? 
human versus horse marathons, adult versus child spelling bees, cat versus dog beauty pageants, seal versus teen swimming races. Uh, the swimming race. Actually, it's a human versus horse marathons. Oh, okay. In 1980, pub owner Gordon Green overheard two patrons discussing whether a man could beat a horse in a long distance race. Naturally, he decided to put the idea to the test, organizing an annual horse race versus human marathon. In the 40 years it's been held, humans have managed to beat the horses twice. <laughs> oh, only twice? Only twice. I was gonna say every time. Six blank are kept in the Tower of London at all times. Candles, trumpets, ravens, bowling balls. Mm. Um, trumpets. Ravens. Ravens! <laughs> King Charles II believed six ravens must reside in the tower or else it would crumble. His superstition stuck. Today the tower is occupied by Jubilee, Harris, Rip, Rocky, Erwin, Poppy, and Merlina. A seventh raven just in case. <laughs> there used to be a raven named George, but he was retired to Wales after attacking TV antennas. No, we're not joking. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Okay, let's see if you know what this is. What is Big Ben? Is it a clock tower? A clock? A bell? Or a mispronunciation of pig pen. <laughs> pig pen? <laughs> uh, wait, is it a clock or a clock tower? Is it a clock tower, a clock, a bell? Well, I know it's a clock, but it's also a tower. Clock tower. It's a bell. It's the bell. Yeah. The name Big Ben actually refers to the 15 ton bell that rings at the top of the tower, not the tower itself. So how did this misconception come? Well, Big Ben is a super, super catchy name. And until 2012, the tower was actually just known by the name Clock Tower. Oh. So they started calling it the Big Ben. But just the Clock Tower? They would just call it Clock Tower. <laughs> <laughs> and give it give it like a name. Like, if you're gonna call the bell a name, yeah. why wouldn't you call the tower or something? Yeah. Which of these words was invented by Shakespeare? Wicked, dude, rubbish, swagger. <laughs> swagger. <laughs> yeah. Swagger. Shakespeare's 1595 play A Midsummer's Night Dream was the first time the word swagger, meaning to strut with a defiant air, <laughs> was used. So he invented swag. Wow. 400 years later, and the term was repopularized by Jay Z, <laughs> this time as a noun meaning bold self assurance and style. Does that mean that Shakespeare has swagger? Yeah. <laughs> That was another fun Universal Yums unboxing, and I'm glad we got to visit the UK. Next up, perhaps Thailand? And remember, if you want to sign up for the giveaway, comment down below, I want to try Universal Yums. Send us your Instagram handle or your email handle so we can contact you. Check the description for more information just to make sure that you know when exactly it's going to end and all that. But yeah, hopefully someone else out there can enjoy Universal Yums thanks to us. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It'll really help our channel out and our video. Toodaloo! Toodaloo.